Well, we get started, I'll quickly just talk about what we do for those that just joined us. So my name is Asal, for anyone who doesn't know me, I am the co-founder and director of AV. We started Anonymous for the Voiceless four years ago, roughly. AV is an animal rights organization that focuses on street outreach. What we do is we hold demonstrations where we show people footage from meat, dairy and egg industries. And we have conversations with people about veganism and we help them go vegan if they want to. We also do training for activists to help with their outreach, etc. And this workshop is one of those training programs. And you guys feel free to help me with the questions that you struggle with as well. If there is something that you get asked and you don't know how to respond to, now it's the time we can explore it together. Let's work on Zara's question. How do you respond to someone that brings up God and they say, they could be Muslim, Christian, or of any other religion. And they say, well, God said it's okay to kill and eat animals. So why are you asking me to stop eating them when God said it's okay? How do you respond to that? Do you think slaughterhouses would exist in heaven? And the second point, no religion mandates eating animals. So you can be vegan and religious. Yes. The Garden of Eden was vegan. Shouldn't we try to emulate what life was like before sin. God is all about peace and anti-violence, so surely a slaughterhouse would go against those values. No God would condone the cruelty in farms and slaughterhouses. Beautiful. If God is all about peace, love and compassion, then why would he make your food a sentient being? Yes. Stephen said, God isn't real as far as we are concerned. Okay, so that's the thing. When you're faced with this question, you gotta take yourself out of it, out of the equation again, as we always try to, because you're speaking up on behalf of the animals, so you need to forget about your personal beliefs for that time. Regardless of whether you're religious or not, whether you believe in God or not, whether you're of the same religion, as the person you're outreaching or not, you just gotta respond as if you're acknowledging their beliefs. By arguing with them about God, you're not going to help the conversation. So even if, let's say I don't actually believe in God, I'm just not of any religion. When somebody brings up, somebody's Christian and they bring up God, I should totally forget about my beliefs and I should say, everything that you guys said. So do you think God, blah, blah, blah. Do you think slaughterhouses would exist in heaven? So you don't need to bring up your personal opinion or beliefs similar to anything else. Like when people bring up abortion, you may be for abortion, you may be against it, but that's besides the point because you don't have to bring it up. And not only you don't have to, you shouldn't bring it up because it's just distracting from the conversation. So just respond to their argument as if you acknowledge their points. I love all the answers, by the way. Everyone was perfect with their responses. There are many points we can make with this argument. So some of you made a few points or one, but they were all really good answers. So I just wanna go over them one more time and then move on to the next question. We like asking questions rather than just making statements, right? So it's better to start with a question. Do you think slaughterhouses would exist in heaven? The reason why we ask this question is because every religious person wants to do the right thing so that they end up going to heaven. That's the whole idea, right? No religious person is doing it so they can go to hell or it's not that they don't believe that they're going to go to heaven like there is an afterlife. That's what they believe in. So we have to acknowledge that if we want to you know, have a um, productive conversation with them. So you say, do you think slaughterhouses would exist in heaven? In my experience, everyone's kind of like, uh, yeah, you're right. So let them just think. And then the next question or the next point would be, no religion mandates eating animals. Meaning in none of the holy books, Bible, Quran, Torah, whatever other books, nowhere in those books it says, in order to be a good religious person, you have to torture, rape, kill, murder, 
animals kidnap their babies and take what comes out of their bodies, chop them up and eat them. It doesn't say that. People refer to stories and things that happened 2000 years ago. Um, it's, it's important to bring up the point that you live in a society where there's a supermarket on every corner, you drive a car or you have money, you can get on a bus, you can go to the supermarket, you have money to pay for your food, so you don't need to be killing animals anymore because you're not in a survival situation. And it's very backwards to go back and refer to what happened back then and base your ethics on that, on something that happened 2000 years ago. That's another point. And the third point would be, do you think God, as a loving, kind, peaceful God, would create individuals that have the capacity to feel pain, to be afraid, to be scared, to be anxious, so that we can kill them and eat them? If they were supposed to be our food, then why didn't God create creatures that are numb and they don't feel pain and they don't go through all of these emotions? So that's another point to make. The other point that you can make is, don't you think since your religion doesn't actually mandate killing animals, don't you think your loving God would be way more impressed with you if you didn't cause unnecessary harm and suffering on others. So if you can survive without killing animals, why wouldn't you do that? Surely your God would be more impressed with you. So these would be some of the points that you can make in response to this question. Someone says, should I go vegan? <laughs> Fuck yeah, you should go vegan. You should go vegan right now. Okay, next question. How do you respond to someone that says, okay, I'm willing to go vegan with the exception of honey. What's wrong with eating honey? How do you respond to that? The practice is still very cruel, just like any other practice in these industries. Just like what happens to animals in the meat, dairy and egg industries or in the leather industry and so on. Um, just because bees are tiny um, and they fly, that doesn't mean that they should be abused and exploited. Um, so the most common practice is they cut off the wings of the queen bee they cut off the wings so that she stays in the hive, so that she cannot leave, so that they can keep making honey and they can keep taking the honey, right? That's one thing. Um, there is artificial insemination or rape as we know it, just like the dairy industry and the meat industry. There is artificial insemination in the honey industry. So they literally rape these tiny little creatures how they do it is insane there are videos that you can find online you can actually see how it's done you would not believe it but that's what they do to these bees another thing that they do they mark their wings with these markers i can't remember exactly why they do it maybe you guys can help me if you know what i'm talking about but they use these like markers like sharpie or whatever to put a dot on them and because it's so toxic, it actually affects their brain. They get super dizzy and they can't function as normal. So it's another form of torture for them. And when they are taking the honey, obviously they don't give a fuck about these creatures. So they're being super rough with them. And in that process, a lot of these bees are injured and killed. And like many of you mentioned, they torch the hive at the end when they're done with it. Yeah, so it's not like these bees are free to just go and do whatever. No, they're just slaves and their only purpose is to keep producing honey. And we all know that bees are really hard working creatures. We know that because we use them as an example when we want to make an example about someone who's hard working. So they're just working hard 24 seven. And then these humans are taking the honey. When they're done with them, they torch them and moving on to the next group of individuals. So bees actually have two stomachs. 
and there's one stomach and its only purpose is to store the honey they keep the honey in there and then they vomit it they bring it back up and that's the honey that non-vegans eat so that's what we're referring to when we say be vomit because it's sitting in their stomach i'm not too sure for how long and then they vomit it and that's the final product that you eat as a non-vegan Another thing is, once you cover all of these points, when you're outreaching someone, then you can say, did you know that there's vegan honey actually? Did you know that there is rice malt syrup, there is molasses, there is date syrup, there is uh, maple syrup, there is agave? So then you can, you know, just like we count all the options for milk, you can do that with, uh, with honey alternatives. But make sure that's the last point you make, so don't bring it up before you make your, your points on the ethics of um, what happens to bees. But it's, it's good to mention those options because I would imagine that many people don't know about them. Queen bees are usually killed by the bee farmer after two years when their egg laying abilities start to decline and are then replaced with younger bees. Of course, because that's what we do to all animals when the cows can no longer get pregnant they get killed and replaced by their daughters. So Paula said, interesting fact, to get an idea of the amount of work they do, if bees made minimum wage, a jar of honey would cost 182,000 fucking dollars. I just added that, Paula didn't say that, I just added that for emphasis. That's crazy. How do you outreach someone or what do you say to them when they say, I can't go vegan, I tried to go vegan, but I couldn't, I got really sick because I have certain allergies that keeps me from being vegan. I'm celiac or I have gluten allergy or I'm allergic to whatever, whatever they come up with. How do you respond to that? So there's over 80,000 edible plants on this planet. Are you allergic to every single one of those plants? If you are truly against animal cruelty, you'll find, you'll always find a way. That's a beautiful response. So that's the thing. People say, I'm allergic to gluten. Okay, that's just one product. That's just one plant you're allergic to. You avoid pasta, bread, cakes, cookies, etc. that are made from gluten, made from wheat. You can get all of those products in a gluten-free version. Or if you're allergic to peanuts, then you can find many products that don't contain any peanuts, whatever it might be. There are tens of thousands of plants on this planet that we haven't even tried eating in, in our whole life. So we're only sticking to the ones that we know, which is very limited. But even within that, there is a huge variety of different plants that we can try. It's impossible for a human being to be allergic to everything other than animal flesh. Come on. We know that that's an excuse. Yeah, so with this question, when someone says, I can't go vegan because I'm allergic to nuts, I'm allergic to gluten, whatever it might be. The first point is there are thousands and thousands and thousands of plants that you could eat. Your options are limitless, basically. So sure, maybe you have nut allergy, so you just don't eat nuts. You avoid products that contain nuts. How does that justify stabbing animals to death? You can even say, are you telling me that the only thing that you're not allergic to is animal flesh and what comes out of their bodies? Just to be clear, just so we're on the same page, you can ask that question. If they say, well, no, but my options are very limited, then I will have to always be hungry. Let's look at what you can eat and also, first, let's decide whether animal cruelty is right or wrong. Which side do you stand on? Do you think that stabbing animals to death for a sandwich is okay? Or do you think it's evil? If it is evil, why don't you do something about it? Because once you decide that you want to be vegan and you don't want to pay for animal cruelty anymore, then you'll find a way. So you'll do it. We know that's an excuse, but we just have to... Again, we have to acknowledge their point and respond, respond to it accordingly. So we do that while holding them accountable. So we're not going to just believe 
whatever they say because we know that's a bullshit lie we know it's an excuse so ask them the question what is it what group of plants are you are you um allergic to exactly and they tell you gluten okay so you know that you can find gluten-free bread and pasta etc right and then ask them so you're not just okay with eating animal flesh and what comes out of animal bodies right that's not the only thing that you're not allergic to no i can eat other things but i don't want to be hungry i don't want to be starving well you're not going to because you will find a way you can eat rice potatoes veggies all of that beans if you're allergic to beans then you have to find an alternative but the point is that like we said there are tens of thousands of edible plants and someone who is convinced that they don't want to be supporting animal cruelty they will find a way so you just have to make that point very clear to them i think vegans are a little harsh on each other i think there are better ways to reach those that may not be in the know about the right thing to do i think vegans just need to stop being little babies and just focus 100 percent on the animals because I mean, not vegans necessarily, but animal rights activists, which I assume you guys are animal rights activists if you're here. If you're just a passive vegan, what are you doing on an activist page, right? But as an animal rights activist, just stop being a snowflake, stop being so sensitive, stop being little babies, and start focusing 100% on the animals. I'm not here doing this live stream for me. I'm doing it for the animals because we want to become better activists. We want to do better outreach. We want to be actually liberating animals. It's not about whether we are harsh on each other or we're nice to each other. If you're already convinced that you should be vegan, then be vegan. Don't pretend. Don't make excuses for animal cruelty. Just be vegan. Don't get upset if somebody points out the hypocrisy. They're not doing it to be superior. They're doing it because it's the right thing to do because they are speaking up for the animals. What do you say to someone who says, I can't be vegan right now because I have an eating disorder? Mm -hmm. Eating disorder. Ask them what that means. Ask them how an eating disorder works in a way that it allows that person, that individual to only consume animal products. There is literally no health condition that keeps you from being vegan. I'm gonna repeat that. There is literally no health condition that keeps you from being vegan. Being vegan means avoiding animal products you can do it different ways you can have junk food all day and it's vegan you can eat a whole foods diet you can eat which is the healthiest diet on the planet by the way who even said that um you can be raw you can do many things but the point is veganism is just one thing and then when it comes to the diet aspect of it there are many ways you can do it so if you have an eating disorder if you have diabetes if you have autoimmune disease if you have whatever chronic disease or whatever condition you have you can still be vegan you just have to figure out how to do it so that it's helping your condition many chronic diseases can actually be reversed by eating a whole foods plant-based diet so an eating disorder which to my knowledge is more of a mental issue then surely can be addressed doing the right kind of therapy or treatment that doesn't mean that you are forced to eat animal products so just point that out ask them specifically what they mean by that Okay, so we've got someone here. I used to have an eating disorder too. Going vegan helped me recover. You can eat vegan alternatives to animal products to challenge your disordered habits. Thanks everyone who joined this live stream. Do some activism every day. Even if you're still in lockdown like me, just do some online activism as much as you can. And much love.